Hey guys, so I'm afraid I've got some somewhat concerning news regarding the Chromium browser, the open source browser which is bundled on hundreds of Linux distributions, uh, which is the open source variant to Google Chrome. So the concerning news is that it may not be as free and open source as we originally thought. There's been this story that's been unraveling over the past couple of days uh, and I apologize in advance if I get any of the technical details wrong but what I will do is I'll put the sources in the description below or the links to the sources in the description below rather so that you can go and verify and check this out uh, for yourself. I also apologize in advance if I do get any of the technical details wrong. So basically uh, someone discovered a couple of days ago that uh, on the installation and first running of the Chromium browser that it stealth downloaded and installed without any knowledge to the end user uh, a proprietary module uh, which had access to the system's microphone. So as you can imagine, this has concerned a lot of people in a lot of ways. Now, the likelihood is that this module is for the OK Google uh, functionality, which is the, you know, the voice recognition that Google uses. Um, and it's very common on the Android. Um, it's available on the Google Chrome browser. I don't even actually know if it's already available on the Chromium browser or not. But regardless, it, requ you know, it requires the installation, or at least now requires the installation of this proprietary module, which... A lot of people don't want. A lot of people do not like to necessarily have proprietary software on their uh, machine, and uh, certainly a lot of people don't want proprietary um, proprietary software installed on their machine without their knowledge or without their concern. And this does seem to be explicitly done um, so that the end user, uh, even if they're somewhat technically advanced, don't know this and this has broken trust with a lot of people as you can imagine and i gotta admit i'm one of those people i do run some proprietary software on my linux machine i mean i run games which are you know many of which are proprietary most of which are proprietary uh, and i do run a lot of um sort of office utilities which i've paid for you know they are sort of paid for products uh, and they're proprietary as well and by and large if i trust the company or the video game developer to a degree, then I, I don't necessarily mind that the proprietary software is installed on my sh machine, especially if I've paid for it because they don't then have that incentive to um, put spyware on my machine, which is you know pretty straightforward. But when um, companies are giving out free software that isn't open source, uh, you've you know you've really got to question why uh, you know or what's in it for them at least. And sometimes there are legitimate reasons. Sometimes they're growing their brand. Sometimes. Um, they're actually just solving a problem. Sometimes it's the trial version of a, you know, an, another piece of software or whatever. And sometimes it's to put spyware on your machine. Um, and there are more than a few companies that do that. So it's always worth at least questioning or doing a bit of research when you do get a bit of um, uh, free software financially, fiscally free software um, that isn't open source just to understand where that company makes its money because it may very well get its money from exploiting your information. That aside, um, even though that the OK Google um, is probably not going to be, and I'm certainly not defending this decision, I'd like to point out, but even though the OK Google um, module is unlikely to to be sort of the the nightmare that we're you know sort of all dreading, um, it's still installing proprietary software on your um, machine without your permission and it does have access to the microphone as well so depending on on whether or not you're wearing a tinfoil hat this might concern you in different ways but it's certainly as far as i'm concerned and from my personal point of view it's broken a contract of trust it's this idea that um that you install this piece of software you know with the express intent or ex express um expectation that it's going to be doing this in a certain way according to this certain software license and then it does break that contract um there is no end user license agreement to read over there is you you don't necessarily get an obvious choice in it as well although i know that some people are going to try and um or i assume that some people are going to try and recompile or, or or sort of edit out um that module in in um, sort of Libre Linux distributions. I'd be surprised if they didn't, and I'd certainly be very surprised if they let that stand, but I wouldn't be surprised if some Linux distributions at that point just didn't bundle the Chromium browser because of this. So, um, yeah, this leaves a lot of people, as it currently stands, pretty annoyed because uh, it might, might not even necessarily be a contract of trust br that's broken because with the idea with open source is that you don't trust the software. The, the idea is that the software is transparent so that you can rake over the code and, and, and see for yourself how on the up and up it is. And to the whole situation's credit, 
it's because Chromium is open source that we actually managed to identify this problem um, as, as, uh, in the way that we have. Um, and I think that this is actually an example of the open source community working. Um, because someone's tried to pull a pull a, a you know a crafty one on us, and people have spotted it. And to be honest, um, we owe those people um, a great debt of gratitude. So thank you. Um, but where do we go from here now? Um, and uh, and you know, I certainly feel that just because they've done that bait and switch, that there is a betrayal of trust there. And um, maybe it's worth going back to Firefox. Now I know that Firefox really is. Perhaps, well, at least in my personal opinion, not as good a browser as Chromium. Uh, the the it runs in a single instance, which means if you have one tab that um, crashes your browser, all of your tabs go down. Whereas with Chromium, um, the, each of the tabs is sandboxed as well. Uh, Firefox does not run a 64-bit mode. It's I think it's pretty much an exclusively a 32-bit mode. Although if you run on Windows, there are sort of versions of Firefox, or there are um, uh, you know, people have taken Firefox and they've made 64-bit versions. I think Cyberfox is one, but I could be wrong on the name of that one. So there are certainly avenues to go doing with Firefox, but um, but I gotta say that is something that I really did not expect from Google. Now Google is certainly a mixed bag when it comes to not only supporting Linux but also supporting the open source community. Um, they were the ones that took when they bought out Android, they actually did decide to open source it to their credit. Um, and they did decide to open source the Chrome browser, it, and thus we have Chromium in the first place, so there is that. But then they pull this bait and switch, which is a big problem. You know, that is something that, that um, you know, the idea of open source um, software and the idea of the open source community, and one of the core values of the open source community is software autonomy. The idea that we have control over our software and that we should be able to opt in to these kind of things. And the fact of the matter is, there was no opting in to this OK Google proprietary module that's going to be downloaded and installed as part of Chromium. It was done very much under the radar in the expectation and the hope that people basically wouldn't wouldn't latch on, wouldn't wouldn't see it. Um, and that uh, that that sort of that's broken our trust, or at least it's broken the trust of some people. Now Chromium is a very good browser, and I'm certainly going to be keeping my ear to the ground to the situation, and I'll probably update you guys as well through videos as well, um, as to whether or not, um, you know, we're going to, what, expect an apology out of it, or expect some kind of rectification or resolution out of it. Um, and I don't really know where the situation is going to go from here. Um, but, um, and, and like I say, I'm not like an open source zealot. I'm not, uh, you know, there is proprietary software on my PC, but it's generally stuff that I've paid for from a company that I trust or at least understand its motives. Um, so with that in mind, I don't know, maybe it's worth firing up Firefox again and seeing whether or not any of the newer versions have, um, have improved. I know that, um, they've implemented a few, a few things, uh, a few new things. I'd be quite interested to see uh, whether or not um, is it Firefox Hello uh, is is actually any good. But uh, when it comes to um, video chat, uh, Jitsi is actually really good that I found. Anyway, that aside, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And also, if I have made any mistakes or what are your thoughts on the idea of it all, please let me know again in the, in the comment section below because this is very much a a um a topic that where discussion can really help us where it can in you know help us inform each other and also help us sort of work through whether or not we want to switch out from chrome and bring in firefox as well it's certainly something that i'm considering um and uh, uh you know and, and let me know sort of uh, what your choice of browser is as well um and, and, and why that is do you use firefox all along because google have pulled stuff like this before but although by all admission this is probably the the, the most shiftiest uh, manner in which they've ever done it. I don't know. Uh, I'm still working through it myself. I'm still thinking it out. But um, but like I say, sources in the description. Let me know what you think. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.